what's up full circle so last week i'd asked if you had any questions about marketing and promoting a new release um and i asked that because i just put out a new song called fire my father let's check it out we had a pretty robust marketing campaign around it and it worked really well we got a lot of traction on socials the song is like killing it right now on spotify which i'm kind of surprised by but it's working and so i thought i thought it could be beneficial for me to unpack all of the different content i made the timeline in which I put it out um, so that you guys could at least kind of get an inside look at to how this is done. It's in the whole process. I realized it was a lot of work, but it's not work that any of you guys can't do. Um, you just have to, have to put the time in. So let's break it down. What did we do and when did we do it? Let me say this though, before we start, this isn't the end all be all. There are lots of ways to promote music, but this is just what has worked for me. Um, so I would love to hear from you guys if you're like, oh, Connor, that sounds awesome. But we did this, this, and this, and this really worked as well. Or I tried that and it didn't work, why not? You know, and so let's talk about it after after you guys watch this video. So first thing is, obviously you have to have a great song. Plenty of people have talked about that. We're not gonna go there. You have a great song. Album artwork, super important. I think the album artwork should be simple, it should be clean, it should always point to the song, not distract from the song. I think as an independent artist, if this is one of your first couple releases, I always err on the side of using a picture of myself and whether that's, you know, something artistic and creative and kind of Photoshopped a little bit, or if it's just a, a profile shot, black and white. Um, but I, you always want people when they come across your music to visually get an idea of who you are, as well as audibly as they listen to the song. And so I think if you're new on the scene, trying to build a following and a fan base and a career, uh, having a picture of yourself so people get familiar with you as an artist isn't a bad idea. Once you have that, I'm a big fan of uploading to DistroKid. I love DistroKid, especially if you're on a budget. Their pre-save function on Spotify is great. And if you get into DistroKid, you'll find that they have all kinds of content creators for you. So a lot of the stuff I'm gonna talk about, I didn't use them this time around because I, I found out about them too late. But a lot of the stuff I'm gonna talk about, if you're short on time or you don't have all the design skill, go into DistroKid. They'll, they will make some simple little uh, videos for you. They have some templates around promoting your single and just kind of like some graphics. It's great. So check out all of what DistroKid has to offer. Again, super affordable if you're on a budget. Um, and even if you're not, I just think it's a great platform. Once it's uploaded, I think you should upload your song five weeks before it's coming out. So just over a month. Why? Because it takes about a week to populate the stores, a week to 10 days. Once it's in stores, you want three to four weeks to pitch it to playlists. And so you do that through your Spotify for Artists account. So if you haven't created a Spotify for Artists account, you can do that once you've uploaded your song and once it's pushed to stores. And inside Spotify for Artists, you go in and you pitch your song to playlists. That's super important. And the more specific you can be about how you're promoting it, the better. So when you go in to pitch your song to playlists on Spotify, they ask you, what's your plan for promoting your song? And I have to be honest, I really think this matters. I really think telling them your whole plan really helps because it shows that you're serious about your music and what you're, the work that you're putting in to make sure that this song is a success. So for our song, Fire of My Father, I was able to go in and say, we're doing this, 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 and this. And if anyone from Spotify were actually to go look, I don't know if they do, but they could have seen the paper trail of all of the different work we put in and the content we created. But you wanna give that at least four weeks. You can do it in two or three, but Spotify recommends pitching to playlists four weeks out from your release. It gets the best chance of getting, getting on playlists on Spotify. So you wanna do that. Another thing you wanna do is create a canvas for your song. Spotify canvas, super easy to make. It's, you know, when you're, it's right here. I'll, I'll post it right here. But it's when you, you know, you're scrolling through and listening to a song and the video plays in the background on Spotify. Um, you can just shoot this on your phone. Have someone shoot you walking down the sidewalk. Have somebody shoot a close up on your hand writing lyrics. Have someone shoot you just sitting, you know, strumming your guitar. You want four two second clips that you put together. So it keeps it interesting, keeps it moving. Spotify recently put out a video that said, songs with a canvas actually retain listeners longer because people again are visually getting to know you as an artist as well as audibly hearing your song you know i was just listening to taylor swift's new record yesterday and all of her spotify canvases are like her walking through the woods that they totally could have been shot on an iphone they're nothing special it's just variety you want three to four two second clips that keep people moving through so your song's uploaded you pitched it to playlists your spotify canvas ready to rock What's the content that you're making around the song? You're gonna want a behind the scenes video, a, an acoustic performance video, a lyric video, and a music video. 
Having the visual side to your music in today's day and age is so, so important. So let's start with the behind the scenes video. And this takes some work and it takes some prep work. While you're in the studio working on your song, whether you have a, a nice camera, DSLR, or just an iPhone, iPhones are great. You could do all of this on an iPhone. Have someone shoot video of you in the studio, whether that's you working at the, at the computer, if that's you playing piano, guitar, tracking vocals. You know, in our behind the scenes video, I actually filmed the most of it. So it could just be you, if you're working with another producer, filming your producer, walking through the studio, things like that. Just give people a look at what the process is like. And guess what, if it's too late, if you're like, ah, man, I have a release coming out, I didn't think to shoot foot, you know, footage in the studio, stage it. Have someone film you, you know, your hand up close working on some lyrics. Have someone film you uh, sit down and reenact writing the song. Sit down in front of your computer um, like you're putting together a demo. Pull out your mic. You don't even have to have it plugged in and have someone film you sitting in front of a mic. You're just trying to give people a window into the process. You're not lying. You're just recreating the story a little bit so people can see what it's like to create a song and to, and to really bring it from its beginning stages to what they're gonna hear um, on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever. So stage that, create that, film that when you're in the studio, and then you wanna pair that with a video of you talking about the story of the song. And for me, what we did for Fire of My Father is you know, we cleaned my living room because my house can be crazy sometimes with our kids. So we made sure the room was nice and clean. I just had Molly who was there with me. We took turns and I sat on the couch and you'll see it in, in the example here that we just did kind of a, a side shot uh, of our face talking, talking straight on about the song. And again, it was kind of an artistic shot, you know, really nice lighting. And we just had natural lighting. I didn't put any lighting up. We just had windows. So if you can do this in front of windows, great. Um, and, and then we paired that in with the behind the scenes footage. So you get the story of the song being told with the footage from the studio or from the, the creation of the song. And it gives people a like, whoa, like here's the process, here's the work that went in. I think that's so important because in all of this, you need people to buy into your story before they buy into your song. That's the whole purpose of marketing and branding yourself as an artist. You're trying to tell your story and all of this all of these are creative ways to, to tell your story. And we have to, as artists, we have to work hard at telling our story because it's the one thing we have that no one else has. Your story is the one thing you have that no one else has. There's gonna be someone out there who makes better music than you. It's just the reality of it. There's people out there who make way better music than me, but there's no one else out there who has my story. So if I can find a way to uniquely tell it, creatively tell it visually and audibly, that's gonna get people to really buy in and listen to my music. So behind the scenes video. If you have more questions about that, hit me up in the comments, but hopefully that's enough to get you going for now. For now. Next one is simple, acoustic performance video. I feel like Brian Bolivar, dude, you are the king of this. He just has a great shot of him on his couch and he shoots it probably on an iPhone. I don't know, maybe you shoot it on a nicer camera, but it seems like a pretty simple video. And it's just you singing the song. So you just give people like, hey, here's a raw uncut version of the song that's coming out. Simple, easy, you could do that in an hour. Um, no editing required. If you wanna put a little title slide on it or something, you can spruce it up a little bit. But again, visually, you're just giving people access to the music before it comes out, which I think is really important. The next thing to have ready is a lyric video. This is just get a bunch of stock footage from I mean, you can find it from anywhere. One of my favorite sites, which I'll remind you guys again at the end, is Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S.com. A bunch of free stock footage. Um, another one is Visual Church Media. It's a great, you have to pay, it's 25 bucks a month, but if you have the money, it's totally worth it because there's a bunch of high quality footage on there. And pick a theme. Maybe you can find, if you can't find footage that actually matches the song lyrically, try the next step is to find video footage that matches the song visually and if you can't find that then worst case scenario you want to pick footage that stays consistent whether it matches the song or not so for fire of my father i was trying to find stock footage of someone walking through the dark with a torch because i thought that would be really cool to then overlay the lyrics on i couldn't find that anywhere and then all the clips of fire that i found were kind of cheesy candles whatever i couldn't find something i liked so i just picked uh, stock footage of um, kind of this foggy scene over the water, which I just thought was really cool and musically fit with the song. So visually, maybe it wasn't perfect imagery of fire or anything, but it, it musically I thought matched the song and I just adjusted the colors on it and I, I mashed that all together. I did this the night before the release. I mashed it all together and put the lyrics over it because 
people are gonna go to YouTube to find you. They're gonna go to YouTube to search your music and you want something visually that they can watch or see as they listen to the song. And you want, to, you want that to come out on release day. Last thing is music video. This can be a lot of work, but I don't think it's as much work as you think it is. If you can kind of kill your perfectionist self or get rid of the comparison that may keep you from ever putting a video out because you're like, it's not as good as somebody else's. If you, can get, if you can get that off the table, I think you actually are capable of making a really interesting and unique music video with just your iPhone. So we'll go through that in a whole nother video, but I think a music video is a really important part to a release because again, it gives people a visual experience of your song. Some other video footage that I think you should have um, and it's a combination of kind of still and, and video is uh, some stock footage with a clip of the song. Maybe you make two or three of these and then just toss the album artwork over top of it. Um, I think again, it's just visually, it's a different way to get people thinking about, oh, there, Connor's got a song coming out. It's coming out in, in this day, we're getting close. Oh wow, this looks cool. It's different than anything else I've seen. So that's the video content. What other content do you need? So you want a teaser graphic, which is just a one color graphic with a simple text on it that says your name, uh, the name of the song, and then when is the song coming out? So for us, it was Connor Flanagan, Molly McManus, Fire My Father, three weeks. And I like to make sliders on Instagram because it gives it a chance to repopulate in people's feeds more because you have three images to work with. So maybe you do two, maybe you do three, but I think it's useful every now and then to test out using sliders because again, if you have more pictures, it'll repopulate in people's feed with a different picture that pops up and it gets people's eyes on your content more. After that, you're gonna wanna have uh, some behind the scenes shots. So if you didn't have anyone taking pictures while you were making your song, go into the behind the scenes video that you took and just take some still screenshots from it. That's what I do is I'll just go through, I film everything I do. I always have a camera, I have my phone and I try to document everything because I, I want people to know my journey of building this music career. And so go in and just take some screenshots and captions are everything. You need to have good captions. And so again, think of what is this picture? What's the story that I want this picture to tell and be specific about it in your captions. And then the last type of content you're gonna want are just some professional looking graphics of the release. So honestly, if you just go Google uh, promoting a song or if you Google uh, new song release, it'll come up and this is where DistroKid is helpful where you can get kind of the, the record, you know, the vinyl style promotion where it's your album artwork on like a vinyl record case that's kind of a stock image that they just load your content on. Um, or here's an, I mean, I'll pop up a couple examples here of different graphics that I've made that work really well. So you just want something that's like, whoa, this is a really professional release. This is a real thing. They're taking this seriously. And I'm just gonna say that again, in all of this, the point of creating content is for people to know you're serious about your craft and for you to come off as a professional, that you have a plan um, because all of that, again, is getting people to buy into who you are because they wanna follow your journey. They're not gonna just buy in for the first song. You want them to buy into who you are, what you're about and where you're going and then take them with you. That's what all of this is about. So what's the timeline? How do you post all of this stuff with a release? Before you do, a couple things you need to have in place. One, um, you have to have your, your socials in place. So make sure your Facebook page is rocking, your Instagram account, um, you wanna have a link tree, link tree is free. It's the best way to organize all of these different links in an Instagram bio. So when you're posting all of this and I double down on Instagram, I think it's still a really great platform to use. I would encourage you to do the same. As you're posting content on Instagram, you always wanna say link in bio, click the link in bio to pre-save, click the link in bio to watch the music video, to listen to the song. And so when they go to your bio, you have this thing called the link tree and maybe a lot of you know this, but if you don't, it's worth explaining. And it's a, it's a home for a bunch of different links. So you can say, click the link in bio. Once they click it, a bunch of options pop up and you can load in there, go to YouTube, go to Spotify, go to Apple Music, you know, whatever. So you can load all that in there. It's a super clean, easy way to stay organized and have all of your links to your socials and your music all in the same place. It's free, do it, link tree, it's awesome. Once you have that ready, then we start rocking and rolling with the content. You've already uploaded your song, you've got the album artwork, you've got your Spotify canvas, you're ready to go. You want, I would say, three weeks out to start teasing that you have something coming. And if you haven't been doing it already, this is a good time to start. So three weeks out, I would post the teaser graphic, which is, you know, one color graphic, Connor Flanagan, Molly McManus, Fired My Father, three weeks. And I like to keep that caption mysterious. So for me, we did that and we just put the date. 
literally we just put the date that the song was coming out nothing else maybe an emoji but again that whole post was to create some suspense around the song I waited a week and in between there I posted my usual things. I posted about my family, I posted another full circle music video, I posted about coffee because I'm always posting about coffee. And then a week later I posted the actual album artwork and I shared in that caption a little bit more about the story behind the song, how the song came together. Again, you're trying to get people to buy into the process and the story of creating a song, not just the song itself. A couple days after that, so now we're, we're just at the two week mark. We just posted the album artwork. A couple days after that, I started kind of trickling in some behind the scenes pictures. Again, sharing more about the song. For me, Fire My Father was the first worship song I ever released. So I just shared that in a caption with one of the hot behind the scenes pictures. And then as we get into kind of the 10 days leading up to a song, it can kind of become rapid fire, but it's really up to you how you want to trickle some of this out. For me, we teased part of the music video. We shared a clip from the music video, like, hey, if a song wasn't enough, we're having a music video coming out as well. And then I would use screenshots from the music video to promote that. We teased the behind the scenes video coming out. So again, when you make all these videos, you actually have, you know, you have macro content, which is the video, and then you make micro content from the videos. I'm gonna tease a clip from the video, I'm gonna pull a still from the video. That one piece of video content just multiplied into three pieces of content. So what I did is I shared uh, kind of a cover artwork for the behind the scenes video. And then after that, I shared an actual video clip from the behind the scenes video. And after that, I shared the actual video on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. So the Tuesday before the song came out, the song came out on a Friday, I published uh, the behind the scenes video. So again, people could buy into the story of the song before it came out. So that, that one video turned into three pieces of content. So we're at Tuesday of release week. The next day I posted again, one of the pieces of video content that I was talking about, which was just the album artwork over some, uh, fire kind of stock video footage that I thought was really interesting to me. And if I like it, then I hope other people are going to like it. And then the day of is when I posted one of those clean professional graphics that make it look like a real professional release. I also created a teaser for the day of to promote the coming of the music video, which looks like this. So that's kind of the timeline. That's all the content that I made. I know that can be like a fire hose of information for you guys. I'll put a link to my Facebook and my Instagram in this. So if you actually want to go in and look at all the different things that I posted, you're more than welcome to. If you have any questions about it, please let me know. Uh, a couple things I want to, before we get into the questions that you guys have asked, which I'm just going to read off my phone here from the, from my post last week, I want to give you guys a couple hacks in terms of where to find content. Uh, video footage, these different sites that I like. So obviously DistroKid, I've said it, I think DistroKid's a great resource. Linktree, you have to use Linktree, great resource. Um, Motion Array is an amazing video editing site and it's um, it gives you templates to use for uh, Final Cut, Pro, for Final Cut, Premiere Pro, um, whatever, whatever video platforms you're working in. It's a great way to make little teasers and promo videos for your stuff. If you have any sort of video editing skill, and they have actually, they make great tutorials. So it doesn't take a lot of time and it's, it is 100% worth your investment to learn how to edit video. So go in, you download these templates from Motion Array, load them into Premiere Pro or Final Cut, and then you can go in and make awesome little, you know, template teaser videos. I just made this one the other day. Pexels, P E X E L S.com is a great place for free stock video. Unsplash, you guys probably know about Unsplash, but it's a great place to find awesome images, high quality stock images that are free. And Aaron has posted about this a lot, but Canva, guys, I do so much in Canva because it's quick, it's simple. They have so many preloaded stock video. They, they even have stock video and stock photo in Canva and a ton of different graphics. So if you are not using Canva, use Canva. Okay, so now for your questions. So Adam Graham, you had a question about um, opening the eyes of your audience to other aspects of your life um, that are interesting in a music context, um, not just doing live streams or posting regular music content. Uh, I think that's a great idea. And this goes back to what I was saying about you want people to buy into your story. So my story, the story that I'm trying to tell people through my content is I am a, a, a father, I work a nine to five, um, but I have felt that God put this call on my heart to be a musician. And so I want to invite people into that story of what it looks like to build a career from the ground up, being a father, having a job, 
um, learning all these new skills along the way, going out on tour, building our own production and light show, you know, like doing all of these things, that story becomes really interesting to people. And at, at the end of the day, if I do anything with my music, my, I, I would hope and pray that my music inspires other people to step into the dreams that God has for their lives. And so whether I make it or not, I gotta be honest, I don't really care. I, I hope I can do enough that it would show someone else who's watching like, man, I can do that. Like Connor did it, I can do it. Like I can, I can actually feel like God put a dream on my heart and I can run after it and I can chase it down. So my story is one of hope and encouragement and trying to help people step into the things that God has for them. So for me, that's posting a lot of content about my family. It's posting a lot of content about, um, you know, the things that I like, the things that keep me going, a, AKA coffee. Like I'm always drinking coffee when I'm writing music, things like that. So that's more of a fun kind of hobby -y thing. But again, behind the scenes, the grind, what, what's keeping you going? What do you do when you're not writing music. I think people are going to find that interesting because they obviously know that you don't write music all of the time. So what do you do for a break? Things like that. Um, Elkin Mark had a question about marketing on Spotify, Apple Music, etc. cetera. Um, unless you have a massive budget, I would say stay away from it. Um, and I would say double down on all of these socials, dig in and pour into your current following those that are closest to you, make them feel special, make them feel a part of your journey and they will leverage your music more than you could ever imagine if you do it right. Word of mouth is the best marketing. Now, if you have money, I have not experimented with this yet, but there are options to promote um, and buy ad placements on Spotify and things like that, which you can totally do. Uh, I just haven't tried that yet. And I don't think it's a great use of your money right out the gate. I think you should really dig in to creating quality content, making sure you're creating music that people are listening to before you start spending money on ads like that. Sarah said, I just don't know what I'm doing outside of creating countdown images for 10 days out. It feels overwhelming. I totally get it. It can be overwhelming. I think countdown images are a great thing. My only caution with that is if you do that too many times, it, people are going to become a little bit numb to it. So essentially the kind of the process that I mapped out is kind of like a countdown only without the numbers. So you're just trickling different types of content, counting down to your release without just put it, putting a picture with a number over it. But I do think countdowns can be a great, a great way to promote a song as well. Michael, how early do you start the chatter? Would you suggest a YouTube lyric? Uh, yes, just went through all that. Amy says, how do you generate buzz on a very limited time frame before and then even after the release drops? Great question. Um, you know, unless you're working with a label, unless you have um, some crazy intentional reason that you need a song out ASAP, I don't think it's worth rushing putting out a song. Why? Because usually songs take a lot of work. You've poured your heart and soul into it. And then all of a sudden, and I get this, you're just like, I just want the world to hear it as soon as possible. Don't do that. You have to honor the work that you put into the song by making sure you're setting it up for success in the release. So at all costs, if you can avoid rushing a release, uploading it to DistroKid saying, just release it as soon as possible, um, I, would, I would encourage you not to do that. I would encourage you to pick a date four, five, six weeks out and then prepare for it um, because that song deserves it. If you've put a lot of work into the song, it deserves a successful, awesome, extravagant, release for the world to hear because you don't want the song to just fall flat. You want to give it a chance to really succeed uh, with your listeners. If you are to spend money um, promoting my re your release, where to use that money? Great question as well. Um, you know, I recommend Facebook ads. I think that's probably the easiest thing to learn. It's still a platform that a ton of people are on and it's got amazing targeting targeting capabilities. Um, so you can go on Facebook, get, get into your ads manager and go in and you can target people who like the similar artists that you like, different things like that to get your music in front of them. However, if you're gonna do that, just make sure that your ads look good and that they're attractive. Video ads are gold right now. Um, so make sure you have the right content or you're gonna be wasting money. How to keep promoting your single after it was after it was released? Great question. I think a lot of people think a release stops the day the song comes out. The reality is, is you need to believe in that song from the day it comes out until the day that you die. And so, what are good ways to promote that specifically in 
the week or two or three coming off of a release, I think checking back in with your fans. I think posting questions like, hey, you know, if it's an album, what's your favorite song off the album? If it's a single, is there a lyric resonating with you? I think creating lyric slides to post after uh, is a great way to promote the song, but also give people content. When you're creating content, you wanna make sure your content is shareable, um, that it encourages people, that it speaks some sort of message into their life. It's okay to have content that just promotes you, but yeah, to your point, you know, if you're just promoting yourself all the time, people are gonna get sick of it. However, if you can find a way to promote the message of your song and what your song is about, then that's doing something to encourage the listener, but also promote who you are. So you wanna to try to promote the message, I think after the song is out, like here's what the message, uh, here's, the, here's the impact the message of the song is having. I, you know, this has been some awesome, here's some awesome stories that have come in from people who have listened to the song. Um, what's your favorite lyric from the song? Things like that can be a great way to keep the buzz going the week or two after the song comes out. Kelsey, I'm curious how much budget should be set aside for marketing around a release. Look, I've been doing this for 10 years almost, and I do not spend money marketing a release. I rarely spend money marketing a release. I double down on making great content um, and sharing it and getting people to share it. I would recommend before spending money, I would recommend building a street team. Text people. You will get more return on your time investment by texting 50 people in your contacts saying, hey, I have a song coming out. You're a great friend of mine. Uh, would you mind sharing it when it comes out? That's it. And don't don't like mass text them. Don't copy and paste the text. Take time, individually text 50 people. If you're willing to do 100, do 100. If you think there's 100 people in your contacts that are in your corner, that they're you know friends from college, friends you have in high school right now, friends that have been along with you through the ride of having a family and having kids, whoever it is, invite them. They Invite them into your story. Worst they can say is no, who cares, right? But like, just say, hey, I have a song coming out, would love for you to check it out. If it resonates with you, it'd be awesome for you to share it. Um, I think that's actually a better use of your time than just spending money to get random people to maybe listen or maybe not. So that brings us to the end. This was a lot, I hope it makes sense. There's so many ways to do this. This is just a way that works for me with this last release. Fire My Father is still doing super well on Spotify. Um, I'd love for you guys to check out the song, let me know what you think. And we actually have, uh, the second version, we have a remix of the song coming out in two days on Friday with the music video. So check that out as well. Hit me up, whether it's in the comments, shoot me a message. If you have any questions about any of this, um, I would be totally happy uh, to talk with any of you guys to more explain my process. And there's a lot more that goes into this, but um, maybe in the future, like I said, we'll do a video on um, how to make a DIY music video. And also I think like how to set up your socials, how to set up an Instagram, to, to have some success when people land on your page, you know, a Facebook music profile, things like that. So we'll work on that in the future. So happy Wednesday. I hope you guys have a great day. Peace.